Hey folks, Andrew here, and I'm here with Joel, and we're going to be talking about Call of the Starseed. How are you today? I'm doing really well. We're really excited to be at PAX. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us, uh, what is your game? Our game is a built-for-virtual-reality fantasy adventure game where you're exploring a world that's inspired by the darker 80s adventure movies like Goonies and Labyrinth and Dark Crystal and those kinds of films. And uh, yeah, it's a launch title for the HTC Vive and we're just doing our best to make it the best possible VR experience that we can for, for new players. I gotta say, it was incredibly immersive using, uh, using the Vive. The, the fact that I had to reach back to pull out my backpack was really interesting. What, what do you guys do to, to keep that immersion with the players? It's always our core focus really, is just making sure that people feel like they're in a real place and that every time we have an opportunity to do something like that backpack mechanic, we, we've been trying to find new ways to do things and not just think about the way that old games, you know, traditional video games do things because that was the way we did it at first. It was just the backpack was on a button because that's what we're all used to, right? But then at some point we were like, why don't we just reach behind and grab your backpack? And then for getting to your, through your items, you just kind of swipe at the items and then put your backpack away and it all just makes so much more sense and you get rid of one of the abstractions, which is a button on the controller, right? So we're, we're super focused on, on those kinds of solutions and figuring out what's different about VR and how we can take advantage of it. Awesome, and with these sensors, I noticed that I had a, a certain amount of room that I could actually walk in. Uh, how can people customize the size of that sensor with your game? Well, with Steam VR, so we're on the HTC Vive and using Steam VR, and so with their system, basically, when you first get it, you set up your room, you set up your volume that it's going to be your kind of play space, and so it's something that's done actually through Steam VR, and then we know through that exactly how large your room is, and then we use that in the game to represent, to always show you where you are within the real world, so that you're not running into walls and things, and so that you feel safe. Awesome. Now, what are some of the things that people can interact with in your game, like to fully utilize the touch controls? Well, we got all kinds of stuff. We really try to just make as many fun toys as we can because that's what we find people want to do in VR is just kind of get in there and mess around. So, you know, you, you found fireworks, you can pick up some fireworks on the beach and light them and shoot them off like Roman candles and you can point them at your, your you know, your head or behind you and have them bounce around, things that you couldn't do in real life. And you can find, you know, beer cans, pick them up, smash them, pick them up again, crush the empty beer cans, stuff like that. We've got flare gun, a whole bunch of goodies, just whatever's fun, we try to throw it in the game. Awesome. Now, there is a, with the sensors here, there's a certain area that you can walk in, but in order to traverse your game, you have to blink. Why did you guys choose to use the blinking mechanic instead of a, a simple walk mechanic? <laughs> yeah, so we used to have that kind of walking mechanic, like traditional first-person controls, and uh, it worked fairly well on the DK1 back when the resolution was lower and the tracking wasn't as good and you were kind of sitting down and it wasn't quite full VR yet. It was like sort of a half step. And I think for that reason, uh, the Uncanny Valley wasn't quite as wide with that kind of VR, and so, so that kind of control worked better. It seems to be that the more realistic the VR becomes, uh, the less your brain is happy with those kinds of solutions. And so we found when we, when we put those kinds of controls into the game when we were on the Vive, it just felt a lot worse. Because now you're physically walking around in real world, but then you're fake walking around also, and your brain just, it just wasn't working. So we kind of went back to the drawing board and threw out a whole bunch of ideas and we kind of just, you know, everybody threw out an idea and we, we had a really quick prototyping couple of weeks and pretty quickly Blink became, you know, it was clear that it was going to be the mechanic that, that was 100% nausea free and it was rough when we first made it but we figured if we build all these kind of supporting systems for it and we kind of cater the game around it and really like redo the level design a little bit to work with it that it could actually be like a really fun way to play a game in room scale VR and so that's what we've been focused on really for the last three or four months and see people seem to be liking it at PAX so we're really happy to show it off. I definitely like it. Now, it's an episodic game, so how many episodes can players expect from you guys? There's going to be four episodes, so uh, this is just the first one, but uh, this is kind of like the down the rabbit hole episode where you're 
starting out in the real world, not really sure what's going on. You're following your twin sister uh, down into these kind of mysterious environment, and she's always one step ahead of you, and you're finding cassette tapes from her because it's in the 80s. And uh, basically, she leads you into something much, much larger, including this guy, the Watcher. And uh, without spoiling too much, you, the game very quickly becomes a lot more fantastical. So you're not just in the real world, but you're going to uh, places that, you know, are, are much more fantastical, really. Yeah. So it becomes it becomes more like an adventure movie, like I was saying, one of those things where you're not just in the real world; you're really in something magical. Awesome. And when can players finally get their hands on on this game? Well, we're a launch title for the Vive, so the exact dates haven't really been worked out yet, but uh, we're going to be there when the Vive comes out, so uh, it'll probably be near the end of the year, around that time frame. It's still kind of all being figured out, but yeah, we'll be there. Awesome. Well, the game looks fantastic. Thank you so much Thank for your you time. Very much. And for more content like this, head over to shacknews.com.